Welcome to this slightly different look at new mods on Farming Simulator 22 with me, Mr. Sealy P. These are some of the mods from Tuesday the 5th of April. This is an abridged mod review. I'm going to be showing seven mods, which is unusual for me. If you follow my social media, you will know that um, yesterday, I'm recording this on the 6th, I had a massive um, migraine, unlike one I've ever had before, and it just completely put me out of action, out of commission completely. Today, I'm feeling a bit wobbly, not so great. Yesterday, they dropped 36 mods, I think it was. It was a huge amount of mods. Um, and mixed in with, um, when I say the usuals, and again, I don't want to slight any modders or upset anybody or anything like that, I normally cover everything. You know, my reputation is, I cover everything and thoroughly. But we had a lot of barns, um, old buildings, shed packs, uh, we had another beehive pallet, uh, multi-spawn point, diesel tanks, um, bunker silo set by Top Ace 888, uh, Dutch shed pack by Ref Farmer and DMI 20mm Normandy, um, we had a few different tractors, cultivators, seeders, um, we had um, a couple of trailers, a baler, that kind of stuff. Um, slurry tanks, a muck spreader, so you know, fairly what I call standard fare, if you want to call it that. So what I've decided to do is my pick of yesterday's mods, and these are ones that stood out to me, again if you watch my channels regularly or watch my mod reviews regularly, you'll know I like something a bit different, something that stands out for a particular reason. So that is the thing I want to really, really make clear at this point. I'm not slighting any of the other modders. I know people have put a lot of time and effort in. This is just down to me not feeling particularly well. Um, and my, I was trying to avoid a massive headache. Um, you know, so I just thought I'm going to pick the ones out that for me were just a bit different, that stood out. Um, so here they are, the seven that I chose. And um, we're going to start off with the Deco Stones by Top Ace 888. Um, you may think, well, Okay, why stones? Why have you picked out stones? Well, if you do any landscaping, you do any prep work or stuff on your map and you've changed anything, adding in a little bit of extra detail like this can really break up a bit of otherwise ordinary or plain landscape. I like the fact that he's ratted, but what drew my attention were these. And I just thought, wow, they look absolutely fantastic. So that's why I focused on these. 1.99 megabytes download, three slots each. Now, that is four sets. Each set is about that big. So when you put them down, um, obviously the first one would be with three slots, then we'll come down to one. So you can place scattered amounts them off. If you wanted to put a whole roadway with them all on, you absolutely can. Now, there are some things it does say about these in the mod tab. Um, stones can be placed on flat as well as sloping ground. The slope adjusts automatically. If it doesn't work well on the slope, turn the texture a little and try again. So when you go to put these in, you'll find them under uh, build mode. You'll find them under decoration and under other. So if you go to put them on a slope and it doesn't seem to work very well, let's zoom in a little bit, just rotate them a little bit and it may well work a little bit better. So that's about the size they're going to be. Um, so that's where you'll find them. Each one is 50, which is really cool. Now, it does also go and say... Um, the ground is neither leveled nor painted, plants are not removed, but the big grey stones, now it does say, the AI helpers should not recognise placed stones as obstacles. So if you put these around the edge of a field or on a track by the side of a field, a worker should not get anywhere near these and think that's an obstacle, including these ones. However, these do have a collision, being different to an obstacle. The collision being that because these are quite big and lumpy bumpy, they do have, and this is what I wanted to show you, because I just, now this was based upon me reading that and extrapolating. When you drive over them, they're, they're actually kind of there. They have a collision. I love that as a texture. I love that as an addition. For when you do a bit of landscaping around a farm or if you're doing a storyline or, you know, having something like that, that's got a real dimension to it you know i think it's brilliant absolutely fantastic so that's why i picked that one mod number one these are in no particular order i'll be honest um so deco stones by top base 888 lovely moving on from there we've got this ignore the sugar mill ignore the pallets what we're looking at is this this is the pallet pusher so again i looked at it and thought initially i thought it was a set of forks i thought it went on the front of a vehicle and you kind of just push oh no no it's, it's, it's more than that and it's absolutely brilliant as well um this is designed, I'm going to try and find it on here so I don't make any mistakes. This by No Name, 
2.11 megabytes download. These are twos and threes as far as slots go. Um, if you've done any pallet work, and obviously production chains on FS22 involves a lot of pallets being produced, <coughs> they all generally get put down like this with a gap between. If you're using forklift trucks and you want to move two at a time or more if you want to, I spend a lot of my time pushing these together. Now, if you've got the... Li the um, the liftable pallets mod you can pick them up by hand and shuffle them across if you want to and it, yeah, that's all well and good but also if you don't want to spend ages moving them out the way to start off with if you've got a bit of space this can push them up but also push them out the way for the next lot to come so you don't always have to bring a vehicle over straight away now these come in six different versions seven meter 12 meter and 16 meter length but one or two pallets wide so depending on the production chain, depending on what um, the spawns like, if it spawns too wide, I know we've got a lot of modded ones now as well for honey pallets and things like that. You can have it a double width or a single. I've gone for a single width. If I go up to here, it says move pusher. If I do zero, circle, sorry, look. I can stop it at any point and bring it back. So if I just wanted to push a couple up to get my forks in, <laughs> I don't have to do it myself, I don't have to do it manually. But if I've done that and I want to move these right out of the way to clear the spawn area so the next lot can appear, I can just whiz over, do that, and it gets to the end. As you can see, they're right out of the way, it brings it all the way back. I can worry about those later. As long as I've left myself enough runoff, I know on my Calmston farm map, this is right up against, there's like a fence here, so that really wouldn't work as well. But I can put it around whichever way. Now, the only thing I would say to this is <laughs> getting it straight. Getting it as straight as your actual um, spawn point is the trickiest bit of this. But, I, I, I mean, it seems like such a simple thing. But... It's brilliant, and it's completely different. And it plays down on top of here, no problem at all. It does say the ground needs to be flat. Save the game before you place one in case there's any issues. Flatten the area before placing. Uh, the pusher doesn't flatten the area for you. Um, the pallet pusher does not test for collisions with other, other objects either, so be aware if there's something in the way, it might not work. And before pushing the pallets, and this is important, stop the time. If you've got time sped up, especially with something like this, the sugar mill, which is actually quite fast in its production, if you don't, as it starts to push these out of the way, if it spawns new pallets in the gap, or if, like me, you let it run through the night and you've got maybe six pallets here, but there's also a load waiting to spawn, if I push those six out of the way, it will spawn them behind it when it comes back. Well, I haven't even tried, but I can't imagine. It'll probably just push them all that way, or they might fly all over the place, or just... But be aware of that. You need to stop time if you want to do it. Um, this is under decoration and other. If we go along from our stones, you'll see all the different ones here. So you've got pallet pusher, two pallet wide by seven, 12 and 16 meter. They're all three slots which then come down. Uh, and then you've got one pallet wide, seven, 12 and 16 meter. And like I say, when you come to place, and that's the two pallet wide one. It's, it's a case of trying to find the best. You need to line up as best as you can. The one I placed isn't perfectly straight, but as you saw, didn't do a bad job of pushing them all out of the way and keeping them neat, nice and neat and tidy. I thought they might go all over the place. It might be a bit of an issue, but that worked perfectly. I have to say, absolutely perfectly. That's by no name, the pallet pusher. Brilliant. Next up, we've got this. <clears throat> We've had a few production chains that have come out that have had um, the, the ability to make seed or fertiliser. And everyone that's come out have been a bit kind of like, oh, fantastic, seed and fertiliser. And the recipes have either been very complicated or involving a lot of things that are going to cost you m more money in potentially than you're making by making your own seed and fertiliser. They baffled me a little bit, if I'm honest. This doesn't. Um, this is by Happy Mole. 4.83 megabytes download, 17 slots on console. It's 30 grand to place, so not too expensive either. Um, and I think working in conjunction with other processes on the farm, and a standard farm, a normal farm, you can save yourself a lot of money. So, you'll find it under build mode, under production. If we go to factories and we go to the very end, seed and fertilizer factory, that's where you'll find it. 
Once it's placed, our put in point for liquids and solids is here. Taking out is done from here. And uh, our point for going into the menu is here. But obviously we can do it from our own menu, however you want to go about it, <laughs> if I could. So this one here, seed and fertilizer factory. Now, there are a few different recipes. Let's come around to here. And I'm not necessarily interested in all of them because the first few, these ones, the recipe, 100 of, you've got um, wheat, barley or oats, plus liquid fertilizer. Uh, yeah, liquid fertilizer, isn't it? Um, and I kind of looked at that and thought, well, okay, but you're make, I suppose yeah, you're making seed from fertilizer, but liquid fertilizer is not that cheap. You don't require a lot of it. And you're making seed that's fine so those three fair enough the next bit was where things got a bit more interesting so wheat barley or oats and slurry if you've got cows on your farm or you go and buy slurry if you've got a, an animal uh, livestock market and you think okay i'm going to simulate i'm going to buy slurry from there any one of those and slurry you can make your own seed and the ratio is pretty good. You're not using a lot of slurry to that ratio. That I, I really like that. At the moment, for me, barley is what is selling for the cheapest. So if I was producing my own wheat, barley and oats, I'm going to make more money selling my wheat and my oats at the moment than I'm my barley, so I'm using barley. And a bit of slurry in with that, and I'm producing seeds. So it's crops that I might already be growing, or... Again, if you do contract work, if you do a barley harvest for someone else, or wheat or oats, and you've got any left over, well, however much that is, you can have this facility running and say, well, that's, that's left over from a contract. That hasn't cost me anything. I've been paid for the contract. It's spare. That's going to go into my seed production. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, I've only had this running about three or four hours. I've already got 7,519 litres of seed being produced. That's just from the barley. That's just from barley and, and um, slurry. Now, the water on this, on the right-hand side, it takes 2,000 litres of water, 4,000 litres of slurry. The others were 20,000 litres. I put manure and barley in. I didn't put any wheat, liquid fertiliser or oats in. I would imagine the liquid fertiliser is going to be less. I would think wheat and oat is going to be 20,000 litres as well. So, I mean, for me, that's a win. Then we get down to this, the solid fertilizer. Solid fertilizer requires manure and water. Again, if you're running cows and you've got manure and you've placed yourself a free water source or there's one on your map, you've got, for all intents and purposes, free solid fertilizer. Again, I've produced 7,534 litres, 35 litres um, of solid fertilizer. Now, so, so that in itself, that mod in itself, I think is brilliant. I'm having one on every map I run from now on. You can take away the cost. It's, it's fantastic. So that's that. But you can couple it with something else, especially for solid fertilizer. And it's this at the back here. Now, I, I did this as a mod review a while back. And this isn't the, the mod review, but that's the manure factory. The manure factory takes straw and makes manure. And that's it. That's what it does. If we go down to my manure factory, look already. <laughs> That's got a 1,000 to 3,000 ratio. I've put in straw, and I've got out so far 236,000 litres of manure. So if you're doing your, your fields, your oats, your wheat, your barley, and you're leaving the straw swath behind, and you don't want to use it for bedding, or you don't want to make bales, stick it in the manure production. Well, it's made the manure... Stick the manure into your seed and fertilizer factory, add water, you've got fertilizer. Now, I know you can use manure as fertilizer, but it gets through manure at a much faster rate than it does solid fertilizer. You're better off using that manure to make solid fertilizer. I know it's a one to three ratio, so you're still getting three times as much as you're putting in straw, but I love the fact now we're getting all these production chains that as you link them all together, you can, you can really make a whole system that works very effectively. So, yeah, that, brilliant. It's what I've been waiting for for a while, the seed and fertilizer production. Again, I'm not saying that anyone else's are rubbish or they're bad or they're not well made or nothing at all. I just, for me, I like the way this works.
I like the cut of its jib. Um, that's by Happy Mole, Seed and Fertiliser Production. Moving on from there, we have got... I'm going to go to these next. We've got these. These are brilliant. Omatana, I love Omatana. Um, this is the Open Air Garden by Omatana. 1.06 megabytes download. These are six slots for the first one. But what's different about these, these are the greenhouses for all intents and purposes, but a cross between Omatana's open gardens that she had that just generated income for you on FS19 and a greenhouse. <coughs> Bear with me, you'll see what I mean. These will take water, they'll take solid fertilizer, they'll take seed, and they'll take manure. Now, there are lots of different recipes on these. You can just run these off water. You just put water in, you'll get product out. If you want to up your production, you can add the seed and fertilizer or seed and manure, and you can get much better production out of them. But on top of the regular greenhouse crops, as you can see, we've got potatoes and we've got sunflowers. So you don't have to do a whole massive field of them if you don't want to. You can grow them like this in boxes. And the potatoes as well, if you don't want to do a massive potato field and all the hassle of planting potatoes, as I found on Carmsden recently. Um, you, it's just, again, brilliant. But what's also really cool, I'm not going to skip through to winter, but when it gets to winter, these automatically have like a polytunnel, like a plastic... I mean, a polytunnel is a tunnel, that's the implication, but like a plastic greenhouse gets put over the top of them for the winter. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So like I say, there's different recipes. Now what I have done this time, and I haven't tried it, I don't know why I haven't tried it up to this point, um, on the greenhouses, is to do one of everything. So that one is running a mixture of everything. I think we've got tomatoes, lettuce, strawberries, sunflower and potatoes, all growing in there at the same time. And if you look bottom right, they're all producing. At some point, we'll get pallets of each coming out. These I did stick specifically to sunflower or potato because that was the two new greenhouse crops that I was kind of focusing on. You'll find these under build mode. You'll find them under production and greenhouses. We go along to the end there. 2,000, that's all as well. Nice and cheap. Two grand. Um, like I say, six slots to place, which will come down to one honestly brilliant but this is where things get a little bit more <laughs> fruity if you pardon the pun if we go to our first open air garden so the first recipes there tomatoes lettuce strawberry potatoes and sunflower those recipes are literally just water water in and as you can see there tomatoes water in one tomato out lettuce two lots of water because lettuce always takes more so it's a two to one ratio for lettuce strawberries it's a one to two so you're getting twice as many strawberries as water potatoes a one to three which is pretty cool sunflower one to one if you then go to tomatoes with seed and solid fertilizer you're getting 64 out for 24 25 26 input for intense purposes lettuce the same strawberries goes up to 128 that's always more prolific where it gets even better is potatoes 192 so for 24 25 26 input 192 output uh, and then the sunflowers are 64 which is still pretty good i mean that's incredible but if you don't want to use solid fertilizer because it's a bit pricey again we've then got a manure option too tomato again tomatoes um, lettuce and strawberries, tomatoes and lettuce 64, strawberries 128, potatoes 192 and sunflower 64. Uh, the water was 20,000 litres, seed was 10,000, solid fertiliser 10,000, and manure was 20,000 input um, and I've already got one full pallet of potatoes with another one almost done on that um, and then if we go down to that one we've got sunflowers 485 so I'm nearly on my first full pallet and like I said that last one I did everything all with um, solid fertiliser on that one. So it's producing everything on that. Um, I, I just, I think it's brilliant. I, I love, I love the idea of it. I love the idea of the, the greenhouse covering going on in the winter. I like the ratios, the recipes, the idea of having the garden with potato. Why not? People grow potatoes inside of a tyre, you know, in their back gardens. It, you don't have to have a whole field of them. The same with sunflowers another brilliant mod and it stood out and i really like it i just think the idea of it's fantastic that's by omatana 1.06 megabytes download moving on from there 
we have got the auto load pack pallet auto load by Rowley Christie 1 VSR modding sir 9.1 megabytes download two trailers six slots for the first of each if you go down that route the reason this stood out to me was as it stands at the moment and I could be wrong and if I am I apologize because I know some of these mods have had updates we have got some auto load pallet mods already and people keep messaging me saying do we have auto load pallet trailers I think most of the ones we've got so far have been for production chains pallets so I'll do the production chains materials. Some of them will only do factory based materials. Um, this pack does your standard in-game stuff as well. So your fertilizer, lime, seeds, pig food, oat, wheat. So the standard pallets you can buy, this will auto load them. So again, if you don't if you don't like doing pallet work, if you don't like forks, if you don't like you know just the hassle of it, if it you know, um, that one will do your production chains commodities. This one will do your regular crop types but you do have to pick which one which we're going to have a look at now so no not that one if we go into here we go to vehicles i think it was under regular trailers there we go so as you see the lizard logistics pallet trailer they're 6500 each as well really cheap um, the first one will hold 20,000 to 40,000 liters um, and as it shows there it does all your regular pallet stuff the standard in game your mineral feed road salt pig food all of that then the other one the big bag trailer will do all your production chains things so anything production chains related it will do including honey so it doesn't matter if it's factory produced or not factory produced it will do it um i know someone said to me the 82 studio one had, had an update um and like i say i'm not taking away from any other models i'm just saying this particular one really stands out and i like it so We've got the option of, and this one is, yeah, I suppose the only downside, you have to switch solid fertilizer, lime, and it does put it on the trailer, seed, pig food, oat, wheat, road salt, mineral feed, and back again. But if you've got a toolbox mod or your workshop trigger, you can switch that out under configurations. Then you've got wheel brand, we've got lizard or mitus, no options within those, just those two. Then we've got main color option, anything on that palette. Rim color option, anything on that palette. And then we've got license plate option there uh, then we go to the big bag trailer I think the options are pretty much the same uh, lizard or mitres yep color option for the main trailer rim color and then license plate those are your options so I've taken the liberty of already uh, if you're not sure as well actually if we go down to there yeah, so the pallets all these ones solid fertilizer seed lime wheat oh all the standard in-game stuff it will take all of that and then if we go to, where are we? It's the, um, I've lost my other one. No, it doesn't matter. Um, that's under pallets. There we go. Uh, the mineral feed one. Mineral feed it will take. And so, yeah. Um, so what I did was took the liberty of loading up. I think I've, put, I've got eight pallets of seed. So when it loads it on, it puts them like that. You can unload. So that's what I was hoping is if I unload, there you go, out of the back, and it puts them back to the regular seed containers. And when you pull up alongside, it will, it will say refill, as it says there, top left, refill container. Press it and it refills. Now you can refill seeders from the trailer, as far as I'm aware, and with solid fertilizer and all those kind of things. You can do it from the trailer or not, that's entirely up to you. I think that's a win-win, brilliant. I'm going to grab the other one and swizz over to where we've done the sugar, just to show that doing the same thing. But this will do production chain stuff. I'm not sure actually whether or not... Oh, what I'll do is I'll grab the sugar, then we'll come back. I haven't checked to see whether it's... I don't think it'll mix and match, because the other one, you have to specify what's going to be on it. I don't think it will give me the option, but it's worth a look. So that should come up soon. There we go. Automatically. I haven't had to do a refill. It's just doing itself. So that's my sugar on board. Don't, I'll, I'll try the potatoes just in case I don't want to miss it and find that it will take a mixture of things but I'm pretty sure it will do one thing at a time always worth a check yeah pretty sure just one thing okay so I think this will be the same we can unload from it so if you want to take it elsewhere to unload let's double check unload there we go and then there'll be the situation, I suppose, as well, whether or not we can um, whether it'll sell directly from the trailer or whether we have to unload at the sell point.
So for everyone out there that loves an auto load pallet trailer, <laughs> I like the fact we're getting lots of options on these. Right, it's not selling directly from the trailer. Yeah, so I suppose I'd have to unload it. Oh no! Oh, there you go, I just pressed unload. Uh, that didn't um, give me the option normally, just it gives you the trigger. I pressed to unload and it's dip. So it can do. That's fantastic. I, I love it. The auto load pack by Rowley Christie 1 VSR modding, sir. Which brings me on to the next one, second to last in the last mod. The next one, now this was one I kind of picked out because I thought, oh, that's pretty cool, mainly for this. However, having placed it, I'm now a little bit, mm, but you'll see why. This is the 980k wheel loader by Janamsk, 31.25 megabytes download, 11 slots on console for the wheel loader, and then two slots for the buckets. The reason I kind of went for this is one, it's something a bit different. Two, the bucket is 12,500 litres and will take everything. I did think for like rock work, um, especially if like my quarry on comes and that kind of thing, that would be pretty cool. Um, the actual um, wheel loader itself is fairly flat. Um, but I guess probably pretty much like the, the real world equivalent, I would think. You'll find it under vehicles and wheel loaders. It's not cheap, it's 200 grand. Slot count would come down from 11 to 1. We have got the option of Trelleborg, Michelin, Continental, Nokian, and back again, and license plate. There's no tyre options within that. You get like that 370 horsepower. And if we go to tools and we go to wheel loader tools on the end, the 980k bucket, 1,400, 12,500 litre capacity, and we'll take everything. No options on that either. You get it just like that. Here's where the downside comes. This, personally, I think would be a lot better if it worked with other stuff. I got out some other wheel loader fronts. I think it was the same on FS19, and it won't hook up to anything other than this bucket. So you're looking at 200,000, 201,400 for a 12,500 litre bucket. I, realistically, um, if someone bought a wheel loader modded bucket at 12,500 litres, you've eliminated the need for that. So that was the only downside to it. That being said, I love the look of it. The hook up. That's going to make very light work of whatever you're doing. And it may be, again, you know, that is my own personal feeling on it. You may be doing stuff and thinking, that's perfect. I know on PC, is it the mining mods? There's, is that out already now? I'm sure there's a whole lot of stuff like that. You may just think, that's perfect. I have to have one of these on what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to be pragmatic as well as, as anything else, but I like it. I think it's really cool. It's just unfortunately a bit of one-trick pony, but it's, um, yeah, there we go. The 980k wheel loader by Janamps, which brings me on to the last of the mods for yesterday that I'm going to be looking at. I apologise if I've missed anything out that you particularly wanted to see. Um, like I say, these are just ones I've chosen. And it's this, because we haven't had one before. We've got the little Mahindra Retriever receiver um this is a mahindra tractor this by holtz fs and gian gian fs 21.76 megabytes download 14 slots on console i picked it for that reason because it's a tractor manufacturer we haven't had in game we've had something else but not a tractor but what also really impressed me was when i when i actually went to get it was the price it's 110 horsepower for like 25 grand that's brilliant it's got a few different options on it it's a nice looking little tractor come on sack can you you'll find out the small tractors there you go slot count will come down from 14 to 1 25 grand for the base model 110 horsepower 25 grand brilliant um We've got the option of, and this is where it also it's got a few interesting options. Under the Lizard, we've got um, rice tyres, rice default. We've got dual wheels, auxiliary wheel, auxiliary wheel two, half cage, cage wheel. The whole back just becomes 
an absolute basket case. Um, conical wheels, or comical wheels, as I often refer to them, back to Rice Default. Uh, we've then got Trelleborg, Michelin, Continental, Midas, Vredestein, Nokia, and Zanya of the Communal, and then back again. I'm not going to read them all out, but there are a combination of um, standards with wides, wides and, uh, on their own, wides and weights. I think we've got uh, twins, rear twins, twins, narrows, various different options within all the different brands. So Michelin, Continental, Mitis, Fredestein, Knockin, we've seen, and back to the lizards. Uh, then we've got weight on its own, fender on its own, weight and fender together. Then exhaust, we've got design one, tall um, exhaust. We've got chrome topped, design two, all chrome design three, shorter at four, even shorter at five. Back to one again. Window design two, weirdly, is what you start with, um, and then design one is um, tinted. Attacher at the back. Now this is hard to see because the uh, the fact it's all black on the back of there, but it's just different attachment points. You've got a higher attachment point ball and pin, or you've got a low attachment pin. Design two. Front loader attacher is just yes or no. Main colour we've got red or black. Rim colour, we've got white, grey or black, and then licence plate option. Let's hop in and give this little 110 horsepower beauty a spin. Oh, actually there's something I want to show you before we finish, I've just suddenly remembered I was supposed to start with it. I think this is great. For the price, it looks good. You know, it's it's fantastic. Well, it's a brilliant addition. And again, something a bit different. I'm not taking away from anyone else that brought out tractors yesterday at all. A lot of the tractor mods, most of the tractor mods, if not all of the tractor mods, are absolutely brilliant, but this just stood out because it's different. Uh, under L1 and R1, we've got left stick side to side, does the rear window. Right stick side to side, does the left door. Right stick up and down, does the right door. You just see through that. Interior. I mean, it's fairly plain and standard, but it's 110 small horsepower. 110 horsepower, small horsepower. Uh, small horsepower tractor, I can't even speak. Uh, mirrors are working perfectly. So I like it. It's absolutely fantastic. So before you go, just come with me a second. And it's to this, the CR600 I did on one of the mod reviews the other day. This is like the mini crush um, and it will do uh, bale shredding, it will do beets into cut beet, it will do logs into wood chips and there was something else it does as well and mine's gone blank. But I showed it using the um, kind of big, big bag lifter mod. Uh, thank you to Caleb. Caleb sent me a message with a screenshot and said, were you aware that it will work like this? And I said, in all honesty, no, because I wouldn't have thought to try that. I said you might be able to pick it up with um, forks, but there's nowhere for the forks to go. So he sent me a picture and it showed this. So thank you, Caleb. Um, if I put my telehandler out, as far as I can tell, it only works with telehandler. We get to there. See, it's come up at the bottom. Well, it seems to be... If we do that... It puts the bar on and it puts chains on for lifting it. So you don't have to use the big bag handler. If you just use the telly handler without an attachment, it does do that a little bit, a little bit wobbly, um, but it will lift it in its transport position. Even if that's just to lift it up, you don't have to take it all the way to wherever you're going like that. You can just lift it up and put it onto a trailer. Once it's on a trailer, it will strap down, um, but it will work on a telly handler without an attachment. Uh, so thank you very much to Caleb for pointing that out. I thought it was worth showing because people might want to know. And that's it for my abridged mod review uh, from yesterday, Tuesday the 5th of April. I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest, whatever you should choose to do. As always, thanks for watching.